Okay, the last method I'm going to show you guys is the common denominator method. Now the common denominator method involves two steps. First, we are going to find the prime factorization of the denominators. And after we find the prime factorization of the denominators, then we will multiply each fraction by some form of 1. To conquer step 1, first we need to find out what prime factorization means. Now prime factorization is made up of two separate concepts. The first concept is a prime number. What is a prime number? A prime number is a number that's only divisible by itself in 1. So some examples of some prime numbers would be 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. Factorization. Factorization just simply means something times something. So the factor, so if I was to ask for examples of a factorization, um, you could simply say, well, 2 times 6, or 3 times 2, or 6 times 3 times 2. Now, let's say I was asked to find the prime factorization of the numbers 6, 8, and 27. Well, in this case, a factorization tree would be very useful. For the number 6, I just find two numbers that can multiply to give 6, and after I find those two numbers, then I build upon those numbers and keep going until all of the numbers are prime. So, for example, with 6, I will start with the factors of 2 times 3. Now, it just so happens that 2 and 3 are both prime numbers, meaning that they only are divisible by themselves in 1. So, therefore, the prime factorization of 6 is 2 times 3. Now, let's go on to 8. Well, I'm going to choose the two factors, 4 times 2. Now, the number 2 is a prime number, but the number 4 is not a prime number. So, therefore, I'm going to find the prime factorization of 4. Now, the prime factorization of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 1. For 27, I'm going to use 9 times 3. <whistles> 3 is a prime number, but 9 isn't. So, therefore, I must find a prime factorization of 9. To conquer the second step, you must understand what I mean by the term ones. Now, ones is defined as something over the same thing. And why is this one? Well, let's go to the pizza example. Well, if I had 10 slices of pizza and I took 10 of them, then I took one whole pizza. So basically, the concept of one utilizes taking some quantity over the same sum quantity, and that will constitute a 1. So let's look at some examples. Say, for instance, I had the fraction 3 over 3. Well, this is telling us that I have 3 slices out of 3 pieces in total, which means that I have the whole thing. The same as with 100 over 100. So now let's take it a step further and look at the prime factorization, prime factorization examples. If I take 2 times 3 times 3, which is some number, if I take that same number and put it over 2 times 3 times 3, then I have a form of 1. Now say we were asked to find a common denominator between the fractions 1 half and 1 fourth. We would utilize the prior information on prime factorization and multiplying by 1's to do this. So our denominators and our fractions is 2 and 4. So our prime factorization for 2 would be 2 times 1, and our prime factorization for 4 would be 2 times 2. And the multiplying by 1 step, well, 1 half in its prime factorization state would be 
1 over 2 times 1. 1 fourth in its prime factorization state would be 1 over 2 times 2. Now if we want our denominators to be the exact same, we need to make sure that all of the numbers are matched the same. So that means that for this case, we would need three twos and a one. So to get that to be the same, we multiply each fraction by the form of one. So one over two times one times the one of two times two over two times two will give us four eighths. And one over two times two times the form of 1 of 2 times 1 over 2 times 1 will give us 2 a's. Now that the denominators are the same, we can compare them and we can easily see that 4 a's is greater than 2 a's. Now our directions say to arrange the following numbers in order from smallest to largest, given the fractions 1 fourth, 1 half, 1 eighth, and 3 sixteenths. So the first step, we will find a prime factorization of all the denominators. So the prime factorization of 4 would be 2 times 2. The prime factorization of 2 would be 2 times 1. The prime factorization of 8 would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 1. And the prime factorization of 16 would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Thus, our common denominator would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 1. Now we're going to go on and multiply each fraction by some form of 1. Now remember from the last step that the common denominator is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 1. Well, we want all of our denominators to get to this point. So that means that we're going to multiply by the form of 1 that will get the denominators to match this. So now in 1 fourth, we have 1 over 2 times 2. Well, this denominator has four twos and a one. So that means that we need to multiply one over two times two by two times two times one over two times two times one. Once we multiply everything out fully, we get four over 16. For one half, our prime factorization would be one over two times one. Well, again, our common denominator has four twos and one one. So this factor would need three twos, three additional twos. So multiplying straight across, we get 8 over 16. As we continue on, we notice that all of our denominators are the same, and now we can compare by way of the numerator. So the correct order is 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth. Hello, guys. Just wanted to wrap up of all the things that we covered today. Uh, we learned three different methods as to how to compare fractions. Um, this will help in particular when you get problems that ask you to arrange fractions from least to greatest. Um, some methods may appear as harder um, than others, but that's why I taught you three. So you guys could use one in conjunction with another or you can just use the one that you're most comfortable with. I hope you guys got something out of the video and as always additional materials are available at your request. Um, you guys can email me if you need to. That's it.